Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to give a brief overview as to the different topics covered in my lectures on robotics. So after covering this video, hopefully you'll have a better understanding about the different ideas involved and how the different topics are interrelated. So here's our roadmap of the different topics we'll cover in robotics. The first thing is rotation matrices. So this answers the question of how can we describe the relative orientation between different reference frames. Then we move on to transformation matrices. And the question we want to answer is, how can we describe the relative position and orientation between reference frames? And we call this thing pose. Then we move on to forward kinematics. So given a set of joint positions, Q, what is the pose of the robot tooltip X? From forward kinematics, we move to inverse kinematics. And this is the opposite problem. So given a pose of the robot tooltip X, what joint configuration Q can achieve it. Then we can solve inverse kinematics for two different poses of the robot. So the question becomes, given two joint configurations, Q1 and Q2, how can we move between them? Then after we've generated our trajectory, the question is, how can we accurately track it? From the forward kinematics, we can use calculus to get the time derivative. And what we want to answer is, what is the relationship between the joint velocities and the tooltip velocity of the robot? Then from differential kinematics, we can control the tooltip of the robot directly. So this leads us again into trajectory generation and feedback control. Next, we move on to static forces. So given forces on the tooltip of the robot arm, what are the subsequent joint torques needed to oppose it? Then lastly, we move on to dynamics. So what are the forces and torques governing the motion of the robot arm? And again, we can then move into torque control of the robot, which leads to feedback control. So here are some of my conventions for vectors that I'll be using in my lectures. First, we start with a scalar given by this variable here, x, which we say is in the set of real values. If I use a bold font, this denotes a vector. So here, x is a vector in a set of real values in m-dimensional space. So it is a column with values x1 to xm. Next, when there's a hat accent, this denotes a unit vector. So this is the vector x divided by its Euclidean norm. And again, this is in the set of real values in m dimensions. Then we have the transpose between two vectors. So the transpose of vector y on x, and this gives the sum of the products of the elements in y and x. And in vector algebra, this would be considered the dot product. We can also do the transpose of x on itself. So x transpose x, which gives the sum of squares within the vector x. And now conventions for matrices. So a capital letter with a bold font is what I use for a matrix. And this is in the set of real values in m by n dimensions. So it has m rows and n columns. The identity matrix is a capital I in bold font, and it is a square matrix with m by m rows and columns. It has one across the diagonal and zero everywhere else. Now for vector derivatives. Suppose we have a vector function of x given by f here, and each element in this vector is a scalar function of x, so f1 to fm. And here we have the vector x, which is n-dimensional, so x1 to xn. Then if I take the partial derivative of this vector function f with respect to the vector x, what I get is an m by n matrix of partial derivatives, and this is called a Jacobian matrix. So all the elements will be the partial derivative of each scalar function within f with respect to an element in x. Right, so we've covered the introductory lecture on robotics, and we have a better idea of the different topics involved and mathematical conventions. So now we can move on to some real robotic theory.